Prince Map. I'm from right here, South Jamaica, Queens. So I grew up in this neighborhood right here, um, South Jamaica. I played basketball in Iowa State. Played basketball in Bird Wilkins. You know, just all over this neighborhood right here. Um, this is one of the buildings right here, American Tower. And, um, most of my friends live. NBA player. Grew up in this building. Ray for Austin skipped to my little. He grew up in this building. He was my best friend growing up. You know what I'm saying? Right here, we used to always be in the lobby rolling dice. Right here in the lobby. So yeah, this is where, this is where, basically where we grew up at right here. I started hustling like 12 years old, 11, 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? So I started hustling when I was young, very young. I started hustling in Baisley. You know, then when I, as I got a little older, I came here, I started hustling in this building right here. And, um, you know, me and a lot of our friends, we hustled in this building. We used to have people on the roof. We used to have people in the lobby. You know, we used to do a lot of negative things in this building right here, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of a lot of the kids that's out here now was babies, and now you know, unfortunately they they standing out here. But you know, this is where we used to have the sign right here on the front that said American Towers. You know what I mean? And like, it's probably might be open and it might not, but you know, it's the lobby. The lobby right here. It's a lobby where you know this is where we used to roll dice at. And we used to roll dice in here, we used to go take the stairway. Certain people, we, we didn't allow certain people to take the stairs. You know, it was more like we had basically control of the entire building. Yeah. You know I mean, um, and unfortunately for me, in the same building, you know, where we used to hustle at, how you doing today? So fortunately in this building, you know, we was hustling and um, someone tried to hustle in the building and, you know, um, unfortunately I, I took his life. You know, so this is where I ended up catching 18 years in prison for this building right here. You know, something that's not mine. I don't own it. I don't own the property. I don't own any type of rights to the building. And I, you know, and I, unfortunately, I took someone's life because we didn't we didn't want him hustling in this building. You know, so it was basically built on one bad decision. You know what I'm saying? One bad decision changed my entire life. You know what I mean? Um, it was like the worst day ever, worst possible thing could that could have ever happened. And when it did happen, I, I immediately right after I was regretful, you know what I'm saying? And um, when I got arrested, I was still young. Like I got shot, matter of fact, as a, as a matter of fact, I got shot right here, right in this exact spot right here, right here in front of the building, I got shot. You know what I mean? So with, with me, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, if I was going to take someone's life, it was when, because I was always bitter, you know what I'm saying? I got shot twice in South Jamaica and I felt that I needed to get re revenge back and I ended up, you know, making a terrible, make terrible, not a mistake, making a terrible decision because the mistake is like a car accident, you know what I'm saying, but it wasn't a mistake, it was, it was intentional. But, um, yeah, when I got arrested, I actually was on a run, I got arrested in Baltimore and I, I was brought back up here to get, uh, get a rain, I got a rain, you know, in Queens and, um, I ended up uh, copping out to 18 years in prison. And when I went to prison, I was like, I was uneducated, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I spent most of my life in the street. I didn't really spend a lot of time in school. You know what I mean? I was uneducated and I, I took my GED when I got to prison. It was crazy because I was, I was reluctant about taking it because I didn't know if I was smart enough, you know what I'm saying? And when I took it and I passed, I was like, oh shit, I passed, you know what I'm saying? Then. I said, you know what, I'm gonna try something else. So I started taking like pre-college courses. So I took a few pre-college courses and I felt I started thriving in that. And I and I started to like being in school. Then one of my friends convinced me to go into college. And the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, I went to prison with not even knowing if I was good enough or smart enough to pass my GED. Now I'm two degrees away from being a doctor. What you see on TV and what you see, you know, jail is not the jail is the worst thing that could possibly ever happen to you. How you doing, my brother? All right. Jail is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Like you, you can't glorify. I would never glorify jail. Going to prison is probably the worst thing that happened, man. Grown men being there crying, uh, men get stabbed, uh, men get killed in the yard. You know, um, police threw me down the steps. Police violate you. They call, they don't call you by your name. They call you nigga or they call you by your number. You know, it, it, jail is like just like. A, a, a modern day slavery, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's actually like, it's worse than dying. You know, it's like it's like death every day. It was, it's a guy, man, he did he did like, around the same time as me, Sean Pika, he started a program called Hudson Link. And it was basically like, 
he gathered up a whole bunch of funders. Um, Harry, Harry Belafonte, Warren Buffett, Ice-T, Coco, Usher, a whole bunch of funders, like celebrities, and they invested in us, and they paid for our college, you know what I'm saying? So they paid for them from beginning to end, all the way to our bachelor's degree. So they funded us, put us in, you know, sent them all the way through, helped us get our degree, and like, Nyack College and Mercy College. It was a real degree, everything was official, the professor was coming in every night, the work was hard, you know, we had 30 page papers to do, you know, and, and I can't even, I can't even explain, like college in prison actually took us out of the element of really being in prison. You focus on your schoolwork and, and you, you, you sort of like take, you take your mind off of, you know what I'm saying, all the other stuff that's happening in school because all that, so much negative stuff happening in the community, you know what I'm saying, so much negative stuff happening, you know what I mean, and when you come out and you, you, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of people that go to prison don't really come out better because you go in there and you learn, ah, right, what up, uh, how you man, all right. You you, 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 you you come out a, a, a worse person, you know what I'm saying? Because you're bitter and you know, um, this prison is supposed to be where you're supposed to be corrected and there's no correction in prison. You don't be, you, you don't get corrected. So the, the, the little percent of people that went to, went to college in prison are actually 100% um, don't go back. So the recidivism, the recidivism rate for those who go to college and graduate college in prison is less than 1%. It's less than 1%. So if you know that, right? If you know that almost 100% of people that go to college and graduate college in prison don't come back, why don't you invest in college and prison? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the reason, mm -hmm. the answer to that is, which is the easy answer is that they don't make money by you not coming back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why Pataki took prison away. I mean, took college away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they didn't want college in prison. They didn't want you, they didn't want you to learn they didn't want you to get knowledge. They didn't want you to, to get your degree because they invest on you coming back. Right. There's a quick story. I was in I was in Clayton Correctional Facility. It's like 10 hours from here, and um, there was a little kid on the floor. I was visiting. My family was visiting me, and um, there was a little kid on the floor, and he was doing gang signs. He was actually sending a message for his dad, who couldn't send the message. His dad was in uh, in confines, and like he was in confinement. So he was sending a message to another visitor and the CO seen it. And when the CO seen it, he grabbed the dude immediately and you know he started writing a ticket on the dude. So long story short, he told the sergeant what happened. So when, when the sergeant found out the whole story that the little kid was doing the gang signs, the blood signs, the sergeant ripped up the ticket. And the sergeant said two words, job security. Mm. Like why 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 would you correct that? You know what I'm saying? The sergeant is asking him like, why would you correct that? Like we need, I need him, I need that little kid to come here one day. You don't don't correct it. Don't show them. Don't show them what they doing is wrong. Like I need that little kid to come here one day. You know what I'm saying? So that's bugged out. Yeah, it's it's, it's bugged out, but it's reality. From fifth grade test scores, they know exactly how many cells to build. So if kids are failing in school right now in fifth grade. They are, they're gonna start building cells because it, it's almost a guarantee that when that kid turn 18, he's gonna end up in prison. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a conspiracy, it's real facts. Because I, like, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I started messing up in fifth grade. I didn't wanna go to school no more. I was being bullied because I was poor. You know, I didn't have, I didn't have much. You know what I'm saying? Me and my little brother was being bullied. I didn't wanna go to school no more. I wanted to hustle. You know what I'm saying? So my focus was never on school no more. So when I had finally got my opportunity to come out here on the street and get money, you know, I took it. I took it and, and it's not much, it's not much I can do or say, you know what I'm saying, that could change it. I, all I can say is that prison changed my life. And you know, um, without those experiences, I wouldn't be able to teach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of times in the spiritual realm, we ask, we, we, we plead with God. You know what I'm saying? We plead with him. We say, you know, why me? You know what I mean? And that's the selfishness in us. That's the selfish part of us when we say why me. But the question should be why not me? So I don't take away my experience. I, you know, I did the time. I did 18 years. I went through some stuff. Um, I wasn't always a model inmate. You know, I, I, I started off rocky, shaky in prison. And, you know, I came out unscathed, I'm alive, I got all my faculties, I didn't lose my mind because a lot of times it's two things you can lose in prison, your life or your mind. And it's easier to lose your mind than it is to lose your life. So, mm -hmm. so I, I built R1, so R1 is like a, um, 
a scan on steroids. It's a, it's a radio that picks up the signal from the city. So I built a radio that one radio about this size can actually pick up all the channels in New York City. And um, I started out as in the community doing violence interrupted work with um, Erica Ford from, from Life Camp. And she introduced me to the CEO of Citizen, Andrew Frame. And you know, it was Citizen was just starting. Like they, they never even launched it. They never even had it in the street. And they put it in my hands to, to, to introduce it to New York City with my team. So we had a street team. We went out to Best Stock Brooklyn and that's when we introduced Citizen to um, New York City. So moving down the line, like three years later, while I was still in the company, um, one of the engineers left and he was doing what I'm doing now. He was actually um, building the hardware so we can like scale in other cities. And he taught me everything he knew, you know what I'm saying? And as I was learning, um, I Googled a few things, I learned some more things. And the head engineer taught me some stuff. And that's how I eventually I, I became an engineer. And now I run the R-Room program. The R-Room program is my program. I actually map out the whole country. I, I generate the maps for the, I said the country. I generate the maps for the entire world. You know what I'm saying? So we can expand throughout the entire world. So the first thing you need to do is find out what the frequency is in that area you want to go to. You know what I'm saying? So they have something that they call radio reference. So you find out what the radio reference is in that area. And once you find the radio references, I take those frequencies and I put them into another another software and, and I generate a map of that area. And once I generate a map of that area, I can actually pinpoint where I want my radios to focus in on and where I want to get the signal on. So what I'm trying to do is identify radio towers throughout the world. And once I identify where the radio towers at throughout the world, I can hone in on those towers. I can take that signal, send it to the radios that I'm building, and actually start making people um, safe with citizen. I mean, I got a few teams. I got a, I got a team that's, that's you know that's, that's nationwide. They go nationwide and they, and they broadcast for me. Um, I have a, a launch team where we where we we sit down and we talk about what cities we're going to launch, how we're going to launch them, who we're going to contact when we launch them, um, which which media outlets we're going to use. You know, when we when we launch, then I'm part of a product team. It's actually a team where we're developing new technology and how and, and what, what what my community needs. You know what I'm saying? As be, as a black engineer, as a, a head of in the department, I, I need to be have, have input on saying what matters in our community. You know what I'm saying? What what, what what's what's needed? So right now, what's needed? You know what's needed? Um, body cams for every human being in the world. You know what I mean? So when there's any type of police um, um, activity or police contact, your, your camera can activate and people can start watching and live streaming so police can be held accountable so they don't so they don't be another George Floyd, so they don't be another Eric Garner, so they don't be another Tamir Rice and, and so on and so on and so on. So that's that's one of the things that's needed. Not saying that it's, 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 it's gonna happen, but those are some of the ideas that come out of my thinking and being in this community. I think if, I think, Right now, in, in today's in today's era, if you don't if you don't know technology, you're dead. You know what I'm saying? They say they say faith without works is dead. Life without technology is dead because you you can't move. You, the world is moving too fast, and and you have to be interconnected. And it's impossible to be inter interconnected without technology. So just knowing that the importance of having technology and and knowing that um that is crucial. To, to be interconnected, to be connected with other people is vital in the growth of anybody, you know what I mean? And like every school should be learning coding in kindergarten, you know what I'm saying? Instead of waiting until you 18, 19 years old to even get the idea of coding. I don't get it wrong. I think that the curriculums in school are outdated, but I also think that if you if you would gamify, right? And, and let me put emphasis on that. If you would gamify the school curriculums then maybe the kids will learn faster because my son at home he learns fast he learns Fortnite faster than he learns algebra. And I and I had a conversation with the CEO of my company a few months ago and he was he was like he was shocked when I told him I said, you know like being a black man in in a company, especially in leadership, I said every day I come to work I have anxiety. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I feel like I, there's a need that I have to do ten times more. You know what I'm saying? I feel like because every day I see I feel like Today I might come and lose my job. You know what I'm saying? Because you and you know, like it's like that. Like the blacks is always the first on the totem pole, and they find some reason to get rid of you. So I always try to do my. That's why. That's how I end up becoming an engineer. I always found something else to do. 
and I wanted to learn more and I wanted to learn more, you know what I mean? So, and he was shocked. He didn't know that I felt that way. He's like, Prince, you have nothing to worry about. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm sorry you feel that way, but th that's not how we feel. We love you here, you know what I mean? And that gave me a sense of assurance, but still, even hearing that from the CEO, as a black man in a company like that, you still feel anxiety. You still feel less than, you know what I'm saying? So, you always gotta flex. You gotta do 10 times more than the average person. And women, women go through that in the workplace, you know what I'm saying? Women, are, are they, they don't get the same amount of money that, that the, the, the male is getting, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They gotta work twice as hard, you know what I'm saying? They can't get the days off when they're not feeling well, you know what I'm saying? They gotta use their sick time. So women go through the same thing black men go through. So, you know, it's hard, it's hard. Mm -hmm. My company is very good company, very welcoming, you know, the culture, you know, I established some of the culture at our company, you know, the, the good mornings and, and the hellos and stuff like that. So. People embrace me, and you know, we have a staff of about 150 people, and it's beautiful. The mission of Citizen App is to make your world a safer place. You know what I'm saying? I could just give you a quick run through, real quick, of what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to make your world a safer place. So basically, we give real time information of what's happening in your in your immediate community. So, for example, like we right here, right? So this will this will be the map, right? So there's one nearby alert. So if I click on the nearby alert, it'll actually be the youth rally that we, we just left from. So it tells you what's happening nearby. So anytime there's like any type of danger or something happening in your area, you'll get a notification to your phone. So, you know, this is all the stuff that's actually happening in, in your area. And we can go to different cities. I can actually see what's going on right now in Minneapolis. So like, like right here, a man shot in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? So you get the information, not only you get the information, you get the real time video of what's happening. You know what I mean? So here we go. So we can go, so we can go to different cities. Like say for example, I wanted to know what was happening in Minneapolis. I can go to Minneapolis, and this is happening right now in Minneapolis. It'll give you real time video of a house fire that's happening in Minneapolis right now. You know, this is actually what's going on right now in Mini. Like, you see, there's an electrical fire going on. I can go to Philly if I wanted to. I go to Philly. Where we at? I can go to Philly and it sees, you know what I'm saying, another fire, uh, another fire, a dryer fire, group fight, all the stuff that's happening in Philly, you know, so we can go from city to city and actually see what's happening, what's going on. In Baltimore, in Baltimore, usually a lot of shootings in Baltimore. You can see a man fatally shot and two men armed with guns. So anytime you're around any type of danger, any type of alert, you get alert to your phone. So if a man was shot on the next corner, you get alert to your phone, letting you know immediately that a person was shot. So anytime someone dials 911, we just take the information and we send the information right back to you. My, my main thing is, is like empowering my youth. You know what I'm saying? I grew up right here on this block. I sold drugs right here on this corner. My, my main thing right now is trying to empower the youth to like one, don't learn, don't, don't, don't repeat what I've done. Learn from my story. You know what I mean. Um, secondly, um, just continue to grow and build wealth. I think that it's important that we understand that we shouldn't spend twelve hundred dollars on an iPhone, and if we don't have, we should spend the same twelve hundred dollars on Apple stock. And if we spend the same twelve hundred dollars on Apple stock, that that stock will actually grow. But and knowing that you buy an iPhone for twelve hundred dollars next year, you get nothing. You actually get two hundred dollars back for the phone. So when we teach that, and you teach that instead of buying two hundred dollar Jordans, I didn't buy these by the way. Instead of buying Jordans, buy Nike stock. You know what I'm saying? You buy Nike stock and continue to um, build wealth, build generational wealth, and leave something for my my grandkids. I'm a grandfather, so I'm gonna leave something for my grandkids. I got three grandkids. We encourage women to join our company. You know what I'm saying? I encourage you to get into technology, go to school, get your degree in technology. And hit me up at Prince I Citizen. We can't wait to hire you. I want we want the diversity in our company. We want more women in leadership. We want more, more women of color that's 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 into engineering, into uh, um, technology, into um, program management, into design, you know, back in whatever you want to do. Just 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 go get it, then hit me up, and I definitely would try my best to get you in. Not try my best. If you're qualified, you're getting in. Bottom line. I'm not going to